back to the basic radio user training program hosted by the HotCog Homeland Security Division. In this unit, we'll take a look at how regional standard operating procedure for communications affects both operability and interoperability. We'll consider the rules of use, approaches to communications when working with multiple agencies, the use of interoperable channels, and requesting additional resources to support interoperability. Within the Regional Standard Operating Procedure for Communications, located in the Regional Interoperable Communications Plan, are a set of rules that govern how interoperability is established and maintained. These rules also establish principles that ensure compliance with requirements mandated by the federal and state governments. For instance, the implementation of the National Incident Management System is mandated by Homeland Security Presidential Directive 5 and Presidential Policy Directive 8 and affects all agencies, departments, and organizations with a responsibility to respond to emergencies, disasters, and catastrophic events. As such, the regional SOP requires the use of ICS and NIMS principles when utilizing interoperability resources. One of the principles of NIMS is the use of plain language, so that all personnel operating within the confines of an incident understand information as it is relayed. The regional SOP requires the use of plain language and encourages avoidance of radio codes, TIN codes, acronyms, and abbreviations in order to minimize the potential for miscommunication or confusion. The regional SOP also requires a specific approach to identifying who is speaking and to whom they are attempting to reach. This form requires that your home agency or department is announced prior to your unit identifier. This is designated to address the shared unit identifiers that exist across the region and state. By using this approach, the recipient of the transmission knows exactly who is speaking and therefore confusion is reduced. While most agencies throughout the region do not use encryption on a regular basis, the regional SOP requires that those users with encrypted radios operate in a clear mode when a gateway, such as the ACU 2000s located in the mobile communication platforms, are in use. This serves two purposes. First, it acts as a reminder that encryption does not carry forward through a gateway. Secondly, it reduces the technical issues that can occur when the gateway is in use. The regional SOP also requires that the incident commander or other person designated by the incident commander monitor the interoperability channels that they have placed into use on their incident. The regional SOP also reinforces the use of NIMS and the proper flow of resource requests. These issues are addressed comprehensively in your emergency operations plan. The regional SOP reiterates the standard for establishing incident command and requesting additional resources in an effort to integrate the RICP, the regional SOP, and your local plans. The use of interoperability channels within the region is also governed by the regional SOP for interoperable communications. Generally, the use of interoperability channels is limited to the coordination between emergency response agencies, dispatchers, and field resources during in route travel events and emergencies. Interoperability channels are not to be used for dispatch operations unless dispatch is communicating with response resources already assigned to an active incident or event. The channels can, however, be utilized for day-to-day -day operations in the absence of higher priority events. When considering the use of interoperability channels, the use of the channels are prioritized in order of importance by situations involving an imminent danger to life or property, disaster operations, pre-planned special events, joint training exercises, interagency and interout communications, and lastly, day-to-day -day on scene operations. The regional SOP also details the availability of interoperability resources within the heart of Texas region. These resources include radio caches, deployable and fixed communication gateways or patching units, mobile communication platforms, shared channels, and specially trained communications personnel. The SOP requires that certain information be provided when requesting these resources to be deployed. This information includes the name of the requesting agency, department, or jurisdiction, the agencies in which interoperability resources are needed to enable communications, the type of incident or event, the equipment that's being requested, an estimate of how long the equipment will be needed, additional support services requested, such as a generator to power a mobile platform, and fuel for that generator, the location that the resource should report to and how to access that location, the point of contact for the resource request, and the contact information for the person placing the request. 
By providing this information, regional response partners can ensure that the right equipment with all supporting needs can be provided to you in a timely manner. In the event of a disaster declaration, this very same information also assists the impacted jurisdiction in recovering costs related to disaster response and emergency protective actions that are taken during the disaster. Throughout this short unit, we discuss some of the major components of the Regional Communications Standard Operating Procedure and how they affect your use of interoperability resources. Be sure to complete the activities below in order to unlock Unit 6. In Unit 6, we will discuss interoperability issues and why this course is important for you and others within your department or agency. Until then, stay safe, be aware, and keep up the great work that you're doing in your community.